I, I was, uh, you know, sitting watching NBA late last night, late into the night. And I, I, I saw a clip. You can't give Jokic another MVP. Should have won last year. Would have been his third straight. Should win this year, he or Luka. And my take is, why not? There's only two players in this league that are unstoppable. Every single game. Jokic and Luka. They were both great again last night. High IQ, Europeans, um, elite, unstoppable scores. And unlike the windmill dunk guys, they actually will age much better. They're not aesthetically pleasing. No high-flying dunks. They stay close to the floor. They move slowly, deliberately. Their game's about angles, thick body types. But the basketball culture and basketball media loves the spectacular. And we've had great players who are spectacular, Dr. J, Michael Jordan, but it's this constant promoting of Derrick Rose and Westbrook and John Wall and John Morant, guards that can't shoot. Yes, they can jump, and the fanboys love them. Lob City, wow. What did they ever win? What did Westbrook, Wall, John Morant, show me the playoff wins. The best point guards in the last 15 years are guys that don't dunk. Steph Curry and Chris Paul. Smart can elevate others, excellent shooters. That's what I want in my point guard. These European stars are not into selling shoes and they're not into the dunk contest. They are into body angles, analytics, fewer dribbles, getting their shot, and you cannot stop Jokic and Luka. And they've got both 10 plus years of elite scoring. I mean, Jokic, that game could last forever. It could last like Brady into the 40s and still be dominant. And Luka, again, he's not going to get hurt high-flying windmill dunks. That's the downside to the highly vertical player, players. They age faster. They crash to the floor more. Where's Blake Griffin? Where's John Wall? Where's Dwight Howard? Russell Westbrook off the bench. Steph Curry's 36. He's still a dominant player. Luka is going to last for 15 years. You're going to get 15 years. I said this years ago, he may end up being the first or second leading scorer in league history. This game's going to wear well. Jokic's game's going to wear well. The high-flying dunk contest guys, they age really fast. And they just don't win enough in the playoffs. Analytics matter. Spacing matters. Angles matter. I grew up in an NBA, and I loved a lot of those players where it was about verticality and dunk contest. Years ago, LeBron James just said, I'm not doing the dunk contest. And I said, he shouldn't. It's, it's beneath him. That was the old NBA. That's the 70s, 80s, early 90s NBA. This NBA is slower, deliberate with its dominance players. You can't speed Jokic up. You can't speed Luka up. They're going to do whatever they want to do. And they're going to age incredibly well. And, you know, Kyrie Irving last night talking about Luka, I've always been a little bit cooler on Dallas because I don't, I don't see them as a team, Luka or Kyrie. Can you win with your two stars, not really defenders? you got to have some defenders around these guys. But the Mavericks are playing better defense, top five last time I checked, and that net defensive rating. Jokic and Luka, this stuff's going to age well. It's not going away. And one of the things I love about sports is that it changes. The NFL now is an offensive league. It's Andy Reid's league. It's not Bill Belichick's league. The NBA used to be high-flying dunks, electric, dynamic, mid-range shooters. It's not. It's not. It's European. It's body angles. It's playing at your own pace. It's Jokic and Luka. Jokic has his title. Luka, yesterday, J-Mac, the one team he thinks that can beat Denver is Dallas. And I don't know if he's wrong. Okay. Well, first off, the one thing that I just want to add real fast is that um, the dunk contest is not beneath LeBron James. And if it's become that because now the quality has gone down, it's because he set the precedent of being a star, a superstar, and not doing the dunk contest, which then gave other stars permission to not do the dunk contest. So yes, right now it would be beneath him. I agree with that. But before, no. I mean, it's beneath him, yet he would then release, you know, a video of him dunking in practice, which is like just the softest thing I've, I've ever seen. Um, but I don't want to talk. We're not talking about LeBron. Um, so I think what 
Colin is talking about in terms of Jokic and Luka is really, really interesting to me. Um, <clears throat> especially because he talked about it's their game is not aesthetically pleasing. I actually disagree. Um, I think their bodies and their body language isn't aesthetically pleasing um because it's sloppy like even Jokic like the way he just like moves and you just right he just like looks sloppy it looks it looks weird so I I could see that but the games itself is 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 predicated on skill which I think is way more exciting to watch it's why I really fell in love watching the Spurs when they were in their prime um you know back in this is like a, a long time ago at this point and then you know then the golden state warriors because it's all high iq you know the true representation of when we say like poetry in motion the ball movement the the right decision the perfect shot selection um it's not just bully ball and physicality it's why i personally never really loved um a, the game of like lebron james aspects of his game aspects of his game um or you know Shaq even for that matter like i like the guys that don't necessarily in a position just to be a bunch of bullies that's why i love you know steph curry i love guys that can play further from the rim um i don't think dunking and all that stuff is that exciting i think at times it can be when it's one of those things sparingly right when it's like but like these days a dunk it's just it's just like I'm bigger and stronger than you. That's why I was able to go do that. And I just, I, I don't care as much. It's not as impressive to me. And I don't watch, Yo uh, you know, we're talking about two different guys here. Now, Luca, I don't watch Luca and say that game's not aesthetically pleasing. I think it's way pleasing. I get why someone like John ja Morant can jump off the screen because he's so athletic and energizing. So I, so I do get that. I think he's kind of the exception because he's a small guy doing that. And it's why... I don't, you know, I'm not super impressed with Giannis's style of play. Again, Giannis is amazing, and I've, I've people think that I've been bad mouthing Giannis lately. But again, I'm just talking about like just aesthetically pleasing. What's enjoyable to watch? You know, I'm a Sixers fan. I love Embiid. I don't think his game is necessarily pleasing to watch. Aspects of his game when he plays farther from the rim, it is because it is so deadly at what he can do. But it is like kind of sometimes slower and stuff like that and you are also always holding your breath when he goes down but Luca doesn't have that so I enjoy watching Luca's game and I think Luca you know is an absolute bona fide superstar same thing with of course Jokic um but with that said I do not think um Jokic uh, or uh Luca this season has what it takes to win a ch to win a championship um they didn't they didn't show this um but when i was setting up this clip before i knew what was like going on i saw um uh j mac talk about it and this clip doesn't have it um about um you know that luca is going to go on this run now you know that no one believed in the denver nuggets last season you know and this is where the where the where the mavs are now and i just i disagree with that wholeheartedly first off the Denver Nuggets were at the very top. They were amazing. They had gone through their growing pains with their existing core. Um, and a lot of people believed in them. I, I mean, sure, there was probably some doubt, but it wasn't like they have no, no one was saying they have no chance. No one was saying that. So, so I, I reject that notion completely. Um, Dallas still has true question marks. I don't doubt Luka at all or his talent and his abilities. But if anything, I, I doubt Kyrie Irving, his running mate. And I, and I, and I doubt their ability to play defense in the playoffs when things are going to get a lot more harder and more physical. You know, I think Kyrie gets exposed in those situations. So um, I, I think Luca is going to be set up to be potentially very disgruntled eventually and I don't know if he ends up staying in Dallas or if he moves or, you know, what his situation will end up being because he is a great player, an amazing player who really hasn't been getting as much recognition relative to just how great he actually is. And I think that's a, a testament. I mean, because, yeah, think about it. Like he, ha he did have great success and did get to the Western Conference finals and blew out um, 
uh, oh, that wasn't, yeah, they, to get to the Western Conference Finals, you know, they blew out, um, uh, oh my God, who is it? You know, the Phoenix Suns. But then the problem was, is then, then the, the dynasty of the Golden State Warriors said, no, 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 not today. And that is the difference between what the Denver Nuggets did last season is that when it was that when it was the time for Jokic to officially be crowned as I'm here he destroyed LeBron James right like they 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 swept them it was like nope you're you're old news now and that is technically what the the Mavericks had that chance against Golden State now I know they're a different team now Luka's older you got Kyrie you have all these things so I'm not using that past as a predictor of the future, I don't really believe in doing that necessarily, especially when you're talking about a couple years removed because you're just completely different players, different team, different everything. You're older, more mature. Um, but that to me is why Luka didn't take off as much as, say, a Jokic. Because I think Luka even has a has a much bigger personality than, than Jokic, of course, right? Jokic really doesn't want anything to do with any of this. Like, Luka is definitely always more chirping always you know john at um owners of teams like you know people in the, the the fans the crowd like he's definitely more engaged in all of that which i think both helps him and hurt him hurts him um you know when you're trying to talk about who's going to be the star of the nba you know the, the leaders of the nba someone like a steph curry can do that you know can take off because he's so universally loved he wasn't really divisive in any kind of way, except for people who loved LeBron and saw Steph Curry as like a threat to LeBron James's, you know, legacy. Um, Luca, I think, is automatically right now because of his personality, he rubs people the wrong way. So you either love him or you're like, I don't like this guy at all, you know. Um, so I, I think Luca's in a very interesting situation that Jokic is not because of his personality but i don't want to say that these guys have changed the nba um I, I mean i think technically they did you know that they have and this is like where we're at right now but the nba is still the nba at the heart of it um which i know sounds such a dumb thing to say but you know what we're experiencing right now in 2024 is not vastly different in from 2020 2021 uh 2019 you know what the golden state how the golden state warriors won in 2015 and 20 what was it uh 17 and 18 is not in any measurable way different than what it takes to win now right um and so um and if you had the golden state warriors right now in their prime if you take the 2017 warriors or the 2016 warriors you know, any time during that time, whether it was the year with KD or without KD, they're they're beating the Mavericks and they're beating, you know, Jokic. Maybe it'll be still a tough series. I'm not saying that they're just going to steamroll them, but make no mistake about it, especially if we're talking about the KD years. Like, I don't I don't know what you think the Mavericks are going to do against that team. So um, this idea that they have just completely changed the NBA, I think they showed us different ways of winning and different types of superstars um that i can agree with but i just think that this idea that they have just completely changed the nba like webin yama will probably change the nba because it'll it'll people will be on the hunt to try to find another athletically gifted you know t and talented seven plus foot player you know like that has changed it and i think you know Jokic to a degree has kind of done that as well but again i think these guys are more unicorns than anything so in terms of how can it change the N the nba i just don't know how much it can patrick mahomes for instance as amazing as he is he's not necessarily a unicorn unicorn tom brady wasn't a unicorn they are brilliant and they are the best at what they do, but you could have these poor versions of a Patrick Mahomes or people that are maybe not as good, but can still do a lot of the same things that Patrick Mahomes. There's like nothing that there, there's no poor version of a Wembenyama and it's not Chet. It's just not. And, and Jokic and Wembenyama are two completely different players. And, you know, to just to keep it with the whole foreign born thing, 
um because that's what it you know that's what largely he's talking about the whole europeans versus you know um the the national players yeah um it's like there's no poor version of a luca there's no there, there's no like oh this guy's kind of like luca has a lot of the same skill set can do what luca but he just averages like a few points less than that you know we have that in football we have people that can do virtually everything that patrick mahomes can do but just not to the levels or the consistency that patrick mahomes can do um so therefore what patrick mahomes did you know showed he he his success has the ability to change the league in ways that everyone is going to just try to find different variations of that different levels of a patrick mahomes which is then like a jordan love even a dak prescott um a uh you know uh can't think of anyone else off the top of my head you know uh joe uh josh allen you know you, you had jalen hurts these are all they're they're all very similar players in a lot of ways obviously mahomes is up there but they all have they can all have very similar skill sets so we saw this rush right we saw this change the nfl where it was like okay we no longer want a pocket passer quarterback if you can't move if you can't escape you know then i don't know if we really want you you better have the most amazing arm and perfect pinpoint accuracy and amazing reads otherwise you know i don't know what to say to you that changed the nfl the nba is more unicorn based in that regard and it's harder to find you can't just find another Jokic. you can't just find another luka it just it just doesn't exist the pool is just not there but those are just my thoughts i would absolutely love to hear yours whether you agree with me or disagree with me either way let's get in some discussions let's get in some fights but ultimately let's just have some fun and please do consider subscribing we are building an amazing community here and i would absolutely love to see you part of it i want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to something that we're really excited to be part of and i think we're well on our way to doing it and please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up as it really does help with the visibility and it helps fight the haters thank you so much and see you next time